Hi, and welcome to this webinar on area-based planning tools in areas beyond national jurisdiction. This has been organised as part of the ABNJ Deep Seas project, which is a five-year project jointly implemented by FAO and UN Environment. The UN Environment component of the project looks at area-based planning and is led by UNEP WCMC. This presentation will describe the review of area-based planning tools, which aim to understand whether tools can support or whether they're already supporting planning among different sectors operating in ABNJ. I'll talk for 25 to 30 minutes and then we'll have approximately 15 minutes for questions. Please write questions in the chat box and I'll answer them at the end. Thanks for joining the webinar. FAO and UNEP WCMC are working in partnership with the many regional fisheries bodies as well as governments and academics that you see listed on the screen. The project has a number of activities that involve two pilot regions. These are the two pilot regions for the project. And in these regions, we work closely with the respective regional seas organizations. So in the Southeast Pacific, we work with the Permanent Commission for the South Pacific. And in the Western Indian Ocean, we're working with the Nairobi Convention. Specifically, component four of this project aims to identify and test area-based planning methodologies within the regions. Here's a description of what area-based planning is. In its simplest form, area-based planning can refer to the first step in the spatial management of a single resource or resource use activity. Expanding the concept further, Area-based planning can also refer to integrated planning across multiple different resource use activities, which would be described as cross-sectoral planning. So what is an area-based planning tool? Some area-based planning approaches or interventions have been designed and implemented specifically to address the objectives of a particular organization, an authority or a group of authorities. These approaches are considered to be area-based planning tools. At present, there are a variety of tools in implementation, both within and beyond the limits of national jurisdictions. More recently, one strand of discussions focuses specifically on the application of area-based planning tools for the conservation and sustainable use of marine resources and biodiversity beyond national jurisdiction. These discussions have been ongoing for over a decade, the most recent of which, which has, has been at the series of intergovernmental conferences, which began in 2018 and continue until 2020. The discussions are focused on negotiating the text of a new legally binding instrument for the conservation and sustainable use of marine biological diversity in ABNJ. Single sector tools own, um, single sector tools only apply to the sector that is the focus of that sector. So particularly sensitive sea areas, known as PSSAs, are designations set up through the International Maritime Organization. The management, however, is by a national government. So shipping safety and environmental conservation is the mandate of the International Maritime Organization, and countries signed up to their convention can apply them. The implementation and enforcement in this case is via the member governments. So far, no PSSAs have been applied in ABNJ because of current challenges over who might enforce the associated protective measures. Vulnerable marine ecosystems, known as VMEs, are a mechanism applied by regional fishery management organizations to protect vulnerable ecosystems, such as deep sea coral and sponges on the seabed. The challenge with single sector approaches, though, is that they're only binding on the sector that is part of the process. Cross sectoral tools, on the other hand, include things such as marine spatial planning and ocean zoning. Here, a single authority, such as a government, coordinates a process ensuring it's binding on all sectors that engage. There are currently no cross sectoral tools being applied in ABNJ. Here is another table outlining in more detail the types of tools 
including some of the supporting tools that can be used alongside the single sector and cross-sectoral tools. Supporting tools are often used to help design or implement area-based planning measures. These can include the use of spatial visualization software, such as ArcGIS, systematic conservation planning software, such as MarkSan, as well as cumulative impact assessments and formal descriptions, such as environmentally or biologically significant areas, EBSAs, or key biodiversity areas, KBAs. These descriptions do not have any associated management measures. However, they are considered to be useful tools for the identification and prioritization of sites for further planning or as a way of understanding the biodiversity values in more detail. The word tool can mean many different things. So firstly, which of these are tools? All of them. As I mentioned on the previous slide, there are different types of tool. Even planning at a large scale, for instance, using ecosystem-based approach for adaptation to climate change could be an area-based planning tool. It's a way of thinking through a problem using a specific set of guidelines or processes. As well as being single sector and cross-sectoral, area-based planning tools can be split into planning and management. Area-based planning tools highlight areas for a particular reason, but they do not dictate what goes on within these areas. Area-based management goes a step further and indicates management actions to be associated with the area. I'm now gonna go into a bit more detail about a few of the differing types of planning and management tools. Here we have vulnerable marine ecosystems, and these are a management tool. The VME database shown on screen is designed to facilitate the work of scientists and managers working on these fisheries. They also promote transparency and accessibility of the work that's been done in relation to VMEs to the general public. It's a compilation of information on management measures taken to reduce current or potential impact on areas where VMEs are known or likely to occur. Areas of particular environmental interest, APEIs, are also a management tool. They are representative seafloor areas that are closed to mining activities in order to protect biodiversity and ecosystem structure and function, and these are applied on the seabed. The example on screen shows an area in an abyssal Pacific region targeted for nodule mining in the Clarion Clipperton zone and was created to safeguard biodiversity and ecosystem function. Particularly sensitive sea areas, PSSAs, are also a management tool. To be a PSSA, an area needs to meet at least one of 17 specific ecological, socioeconomic or scientific criteria and be at risk from international shipping activities. Currently, these tools are only applied within national jurisdiction, and this is because of the challenges of the ABNJ governance frameworks. Ecologically or biologically significant marine areas, known as EBSAs, are a planning tool. They are areas which have been identified as important for the healthy functioning of our oceans and the, and the services that they provide. There are seven criteria for establishing an area as an EBSA, including rarity, uniqueness, and special importance for species. Key biodiversity areas, KBAs, are nationally identified sites of global significance, and these are a planning tool. The identification of KBAs is an important approach to address biodiversity conservation at the site scale, i.e. at the level of individual sites, concessions, or land management units. KBAs are identified using globally standardized criteria and thresholds, and have clearly defined boundaries. They're seen as an umbrella designation, which includes globally important sites for different taxa and realms, such as important bird and biodiversity areas, 
IBAs. All high seas KBAs and IBAs have been identified by the BirdLife Secretariat. And this is in contrast to the national level approach of those identified within national waters. I've discussed some of the examples of area-based planning and area-based management tools. So now I'm gonna specifically talk about why we need area-based planning tools in areas beyond national jurisdiction. In recognition of remaining gaps in the existing governance frameworks and in light of government growing pressures, the necessity for cross-sectoral coordination and management of activities in ABNJ is being increasingly realised. For over a decade, issues surrounding the conservation of marine biodiversity in ABNJ have been a topic of extensive discussion. In 2004, the United Nations General Assembly established a Biodiversity Beyond National Jurisdiction Working Group, BBNJ, and this was to explore these issues. In 2015, the Working Group provided recommendations to the United Nations General Assembly to develop a new legally binding instrument for the conservation and sustainable use of marine biodiversity in ABNJ. But A, B and J are different, and how are they different? So firstly, there is a different legal framework. Secondly, a different set, specific set of stakeholders. And thirdly, the physical conditions tend to be much deeper and they contain slower growing ecosystems. So the conditions overall in areas beyond national jurisdiction are not the same as within national waters. Currently, there are only sector-specific planning approaches in ABNJ, not cross-sectoral. As activities increase within ABNJ, it's unclear how the various tools that are applied by the different sectors may interact. Here you can see the number of sectors involved and the different depths at which they operate. So what is a possible solution? Applying cross-sectoral planning tools that are currently used within national waters to ABNJ may be a solution to the current single sector framework. For example, marine spatial planning. The ABNJ Deep Seas Project aims to explore this space through developing a methodology for marine spatial planning to discuss with the two pilot regions. So how can this planning work in ABNJ? At UNEP WCMC, we've been looking into this to provide more insight into how cross-sectoral planning tools currently used in national waters can be used in areas beyond national jurisdiction in the future. So I will now go into a bit more detail on what we've done so far. The aim of this review was to identify the potential for different area-based planning tools to support cross-sectoral planning for the conservation and sustainable use of biodiversity beyond national jurisdiction. The results of this review will be used to guide the development of a dedicated area-based planning methodology to support biodiversity conservation and sustainable use objectives in marine ABNJ. Five types of area-based planning tool were identified and selected based on the following factors their associated management potential, firstly, sectoral representation, existing implementation in coastal waters or ABNJ, increasing global interest, and finally, their significance to the BBNJ process. Care was taken to ensure a balanced representation of the different sectors currently operating within ABNJ and to ensure that well-established tools were selected in order to identify lessons for the future. To evaluate the five tools in a systematic manner, review criteria were determined based on the fundamental elements of area-based planning. 
for example, stakeholder engagement or adaptability. For each criteria, the key differences between national waters and A, B and J were highlighted and discussed. The criteria were applied to existing international or regional guidelines for each tool to identify any key features that enable the tool to contribute towards the conservation and sustainable use of biodiversity in A, B and J. Specific questions relating to the known requirements for cross-sectoral area-based planning were applied to the guidelines to focus the review. For example, is the tool applied to a particular ecological feature or does it follow an ecosystem approach? Or at what scale can the tool be applied? At present, cross-sectoral area-based planning doesn't occur in A, B and J. However, through the analysis, it's been identified that marine spatial planning can be developed to support cross-sectoral planning. Some challenges still remain, which may be possible to overcome. One fundamental reason for this is a gap in governance in A, B and J. The report highlights several conditions which could support cross-sectoral planning in A, B and J, and I'll now go into these in a bit more detail. Firstly, legal basis. The United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, known as UNCLOS, sets out general environmental obligations and provides an overarching framework under which area-based planning for the conservation and sustainable use of biodiversity in A, B and J may occur. However, it doesn't provide a clear mechanism for marine spatial planning specifically. A new implementing agreement for BBNJ could provide a direct vehicle through which state implementation and compliance with the general obligations set out under UNCLOS could be monitored. Secondly, institutional framework. Activities in ABNJ are currently governed under a sectoral approach, whereby specific activities are controlled by their respective sectors, with limited or no consideration for other sectoral activities. As such, there is no single institution or organization with the mandate or responsibility to address multi-sectoral issues or to undertake cross-sectoral planning. The scenarios that are developed through the tools review will be elaborated further and used to test a methodology in 2019. Thirdly, stakeholder engagement. Most sectoral institutions have a duty to cooperate with other sectors and stakeholders. Capacity in terms of time and funding can be a challenge to this, although there are some good examples. A new implementing agreement could provide a dedicated engagement mechanism to support cross-sectoral cooperation and engagement. Alternatively, a community of practice could be established to facilitate information exchange and sharing of experiences. It can encourage interaction and coordination between different sectoral organizations and facilitate collation of shared resources and tools to support effective management in ABNJ. And finally, capacity. At present, there are no existing institutions with the capacity or mandate to lead cross-sectoral area-based planning in ABNJ. Strengthening national capacity for ocean governance and planning may be one way to support improved sustainable biodiversity planning in A, B and J. Capacity building and the transfer of marine technology is one of the key themes for discussion in the BBNJ process. The report also explored three different scenarios through which cross-sectoral area-based planning in A, B and J could be implemented. It focuses primarily on the challenges associated with gaps in governance. So from scenario one to scenario three, there is likely a progressively greater level of effort involved, but also associated with that potentially greater effectiveness. Further analysis of these scenarios in the context of the presence or absence of a new international legally binding instrument is being undertaken. This will be developed in the methodology document produced uh, later this year. So to summarize, as discussed in this webinar, there are a variety of tools in implementation, both within and beyond the limits of national jurisdiction. 
Currently, cross-sectoral planning tools are only being applied in national waters, not in areas beyond national jurisdiction. This report explored the applicability of area-based planning tools for the conservation and sustainable use of marine resources and biodiversity beyond national jurisdiction, in line with the discussions from the BBNJ process. Through the analysis, it's been identified that marine spatial planning can be developed to support cross sectoral planning in ABNJ, and this will be developed further in the methodology document later on this year. Thank you very much for allowing me to give you an update on the ABNJ Deep Seas project activities in relation to area-based planning tools. Please get in touch with the following email addresses if you have any further questions. For now, if you put questions in the chat box, we will respond to as many of them as we can. Thanks very much for listening. Hi, I'll wait for another couple of minutes to see if there's any questions, but if not, um, we'll end the webinar and if anyone has any questions afterwards, they can email us and we will get back to you. Hi, so I have a question from Lyle, well, a suggestion from Lyle, saying one additional supporting tool that we may wish to consider are important marine mammal areas under IUCN. So thanks for that. Yeah, we'll definitely consider that and see if we can incorporate it. So it's a good suggestion. Thank you, Lyle. Hi all, thanks again for listening. I think that's the end of our questions. So this webinar has been recorded and we will make it available online. Um, we have your email addresses, so we'll be emailing you with the location um, of the webinar once we have it available online. And we also have another webinar this Friday on how data and metadata can be used to support area-based planning tools in ABNJ. So we'll maybe speak to you then. Thank you, bye-bye.